Welcome to Rogue Trader. Please read the disclaimer and remember that prices can go down as well as up. Hello and today I'm going to be taking a look at Softcat PLC. I first invested in Softcat back in 2020 and they did really well since then. But then ever since September, the share price has been in a clear downtrend. If you look back over a year ago, I did a previous video on them where you can get a lot more detail. But in this video, I'm just going to be going through them fairly briefly and then focusing on what's changed in the last year. Softcat are a IT infrastructure development company. And in today's world where lots of businesses are having to invest in IT to keep ahead of all the competition, they provide this service in four different main ways. Hybrid infrastructure, digital workspace, cybersecurity and IT intelligence. Hybrid infrastructure is mainly where companies want to upgrade their whole IT system. So it includes updating to cloud computing, having more localized data centers, and providing all the staff with the computers and laptops and general infrastructure that they're gonna need. Digital workspace is this phenomenon where special technology can be used to link out your your usual business practices to the IT systems of the company. Think about the gas engineer that comes around your house to fix your boiler. He'll be typing it into his notebook there, the details of the piece of work just done. And then the central office have a record of exactly what's been done at every address. And then I'm sure then accounts send you the bill automatically as well. Cybersecurity is obviously something that's increasingly important and they help with that. IT intelligence is using IT, it's using IT infrastructure to improve the efficiency of your company and try and give it a competitive edge. So for example, when you go and buy some toilet paper from your local supermarket, that will be logged through the tills and then a message sent back to the central warehouses that someone's bought another roll of toilet paper and they use that information to then to load up the pallets in the warehouse and organize the logistics in the most efficient way possible. You could also think of a customer support center where people phone in to complain about problems with a product and then in real time the company can uh, collate the data and highlight problem areas and then perhaps feed that back to the factory so in real time problems can get fixed. So overall, obviously, as the world ever becomes increasingly digitalized, there's definitely going to be a lot of money in businesses upgrading their IT infrastructure. And so that was why I first invested as Softcat as a company that are well placed to take advantage of that. Their actual revenues break down into about 41% hardware, 48% software, and 11% services. And they grow through a organic model where they have important customer support managers who build up relationship with customers all over the world, although they've got their main focus in the UK. So here you can see there was generally a linear trend in the growth of their share price. And actually that coincided with a linear trend in how their operating profits have been increasing over the years. I did my first video of them here back in 2020 and then bought some shares and you see that the share price has done extremely well for me until September when all of a sudden it started to do this uh, clear downtrend. They announced their full year results for the 2021 financial year in October and in this update they had revenue increasing by 7%, growth profit increasing by 17%, and their ordinary dividend going up by 25%. So amazing results, really. And then they only just recently released a trading update, perhaps in response to the falling share price. And this basically said that everything was still going Ferrero Rocher excellent. So this leaves me with the puzzle of why this stock, which is performing so well in terms of their fundamental numbers, is suddenly uh, in this clear downtrend looking at their profit and loss and now over many years they've got consistently increasing income and their and their expenditure seems under control with really nice operating profit and net income increases here right up to now 
you can see their net income history is a very nice profile with the income widening from the expenditure just how we like to see we can see in the breakdown that a lot of the increases are coming from their hardware whereas the software and services are kind of plateauing and most of their business is with small and small and medium sized businesses although they do have significant income from from the public sector and also from enterprise which i think is big multinationals their net asset profile is increasing steadily and you can see how they keep on piling up the cash and right up to 2021 full year they've got a nicely increasing uh, amount of cash in the bank and they have no debt which is amazing i love companies that have no debt then when i look at the equity and valuation and perhaps we start to have the first clues to where the problem lies you can see that the market cap has been screaming ahead of their actual net assets which is right down here in green and their price to earning ratio is about 35.8 now when i look at all their peers here their price to earning ratio isn't actually that bad in relation to their peers but what we've got to remember is softcat goes into the bundle of stocks with high price to earnings ratios and in recent years in these exuberant markets the large asset managers have been piling loads of money into these stocks with high price to earnings ratios and that explains this massive divergence of the market cap from the actual net assets and comparing it to commodities which are kind of the other end of the spectrum but with commodity stocks, you tend to have just over a price of earnings ratio of about 10 up here in the mid 30. This leads me to suspect that what's happened is, is these high price to earning ratio situations have started to become unfashionable with the institutional asset managers that own most of the shares of these companies. They're responsible for the pump up and now they might be responsible for the pump down. I went back to September to try and look at what macro factors may have been affecting this and indeed in late September was when we had the Fed meeting and the Bank of, Me Bank of England meeting where the central banks announced that we, could, that we would be entering into a new phase of increasing interest rates and quantitative tightening. That does time quite suspiciously with when we see this sudden change in trend. Moving on to the statement of cash flows and Softcat have a really nice statement of cash flows. We can see they had 91 million from normal activities whilst they only are spending out 2 million from renting office, 2 million for capex and 4 million for intangibles. And that meant that for full year 2021, they were able to pay out an amazing 61 million in dividends and still have 20 million left over to put in the bank, which is now a very impressive 101 million in the bank. I looked at the shareholder composition and they had a interesting profile. Actually, I couldn't fully establish what a lot of the shares were but that normally is actually institutional investors that creep under the radar because they don't have enough percentage to um, be actually listed in the annual report. The one institutional that did fit that criteria was Maurer Investment Management, but they haven't actually been selling. But what was remarkable about Softcat is that the founder, Peter Kelly, has about a third of the shares and a early investor, John Nash, has a, a sizable portion here as, as does the chairman and we can see that actually the chairman and John Nash were both selling shares in 2021 it is a bit worrying that a few individuals own quite a lot of the shares because you do worry will they think it's now time to cash in to help aid credence to my little theory that I was forming that the problem here might be that the, that the actual sector is becoming unfashionable. I had a look at all these other stocks within the same sector and started to see a bit of a pattern emerge. First of all, actually, there were some anomalies within the same sector, but kind of different companies. So Kanos, they do the same thing, but they focus only on public sector. So their performance has been bloated 
even though they do actually fit the uh, general trend since September, they're generally more bloated because obviously during lockdown, the UK health health service and Kanos, one of Kanos's biggest biggest customers is the UK is the NHS had to do a lot of investment into digital infrastructure for all the work at home stuff. So they're a bit of an anomaly. Practically all that Sage do is business software, mainly accounting software. So obviously with all these people working from home, you know, companies were buying extra copies of the software for the people working at home. So they're a bit of an anomaly. And then Avast, all they do is home virus software. So again, all the people working from home uh, companies were going to have to, having to pay for them to buy virus software uh, because they were working from home. So I deleted those three anomalies. And this really is a set of companies that are all within the IT development sector in the UK who are all fairly similar to Softcat. And it is remarkable how we see the same profile here as if they're the same signature. And as we can see from September, when it became apparent, uh, particularly with increasing inflation, the central banks were going to start quantitative tightening and raising interest rates. We see how the these stocks all, are all following the same trend. It does lead me to believe that whilst over the last few years, the large institutional asset holders have been pumping more and more money into these companies with high price to earnings ratio, that trend is now reversing as we see ourselves in danger of a high interest rate environment in 2022. So I've done well from this stock, um, but I feel like I just can't fight against this tide. Despite how amazing the company is in terms of their performance, their growth, their statement of cash flows, I feel like I just can't fight against this tide. And I definitely am going to sell half I was kind of thinking, struggling over selling all, and I do worry, you know, I like to be a investor, not a trader. And so I have a target of only making 10 trades each year. What I've done is I've decided I'll sell half and then sell the rest if a 12% stop loss is triggered. And that's a way of kind of psychologically dealing with uh, these investment decisions you know I, I want to kind of be cautious before selling i don't want to be selling and then buying back and, and this kind of thing but based on my assessment of this stock and how the whole sector is going i do think it's time to protect myself it's a real shame because um i'm low in stocks already with my portfolio but really i've got no choice but sell half of them now and then the rest after a 12% stop loss. And I need to then, I need to go hunting for stocks which don't have this same problem. You're fighting against the tide of institutional sentiment. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and it was useful for you. Please remember that I'm just a amateur on the internet vlogging his investment journey. So I hope you're having a good start to the year with whatever you're doing, good luck.